I also am someone who learns a lot by watching others. So if there is something that I want to learn that I don't know how to do, I might ask an artist I know who works that way or uses that tool just so I can watch them and observe and then try it myself. Can you tell us about yourself? So my name is Lori. My pronouns are she, her. I am in California. I'm in the Bay Area near San Francisco. I've been making art since I was really young. I started in preschool and I have photos that my family took of me painting in preschool. And what I always tell my students is I started in preschool and I basically never stopped. And so when I was younger, I loved to draw and paint. And then when I got older, I started doing sculptural work as well. And then I went to college for art and then I went to graduate school for art. So I've been studying art and making art for a very long time. How have your life experiences shaped your art? So I grew up in another country. I didn't grow up in the U.S. I was born in South Africa, which is all the way at the bottom of the continent of Africa. So when I moved to this country, I had a different accent and my clothes were different. A lot of things were different. And all I wanted to do was fit in. So I watched a lot of TV, American TV, and practiced speaking the same way Americans do so I could get rid of my accent. And so all these little things about feeling different and feeling like sort of like I was outside of things really informed a lot of my work and so a lot of my earlier work was about this character that I created that looked like an alien just someone from somewhere else somewhere very far away and then the other thing that really informed my work was my my love of color and light and I have always been really excited about being able to use watercolor to create these huge areas of bright and vibrant colors that sometimes the colors leak into one another or we would say bleed into one another and I know a lot of times when I'm teaching, my students are very upset if that happens with their watercolor. But I always tell them, I think that that's like a really magic part about using watercolor is when these colors meet up and maybe create a little pool on the paper and do something different. I personally love working really big. I used to work with huge rolls of watercolor paper, but there's no space to keep work like that anymore. So I've noticed over time, my work has gotten smaller. But I think if I, if I had my dream space and it was huge, I would just do like tables long kind of paintings. So my workaround is sometimes I do a series of paintings that are separate that then might all go together when I display them. What's your creative process like? I would say that almost all the time, everything I create is from play. It's very, very rare that I plan something out. I might sketch if things aren't working out the way I imagine them in my head. Although I will say most of the time, what I imagine in my head is not how my work turns out, which is totally fine. One thing I do notice is I will sometimes create something and that's what I call my first version. And oftentimes I don't like my first version, so I'll put it aside and then I'll do it again and I'll do it a little differently and then I get it more to how I want it to be. How do you deal with frustrations? I think what I've learned to do to try and avoid ending up in that place of frustration is I don't tend to work on one thing. So if I'm going to paint, I probably have two or three pieces of watercolor paper set out in front of me and I work on something for a bit. And then while that's drying, I start on something new. So I'm always moving back and forth. And so if something isn't turning out the way I want, rather than saying, this isn't working, crumbling it up and throwing it away, I just put it aside and I work on something else. What does your art express? I would say my work more than anything expresses emotions. I'm really interested in sharing my curiosity about the world, about the universe, about how things work, about how we are connected. I really like this idea that we are all connected in different ways, that we are not as different as we think we are. And I'm really excited about exploring new worlds with my work. So a lot of my more recent paintings are about this place I call the veil, the place that is beyond what we see. So sometimes when I'm painting it, I imagine that I'm below the veil and the world that exists below that. And sometimes I imagine I'm on top of the veil looking down at everything. Some of these paintings are very detailed about what does it look like in that world on a teeny tiny level. And sometimes they're really big pieces that are more about like looking at that whole universe from up above. What advice do you have for kid artists? 
The most important thing is to think of your art making at like a muscle, just like the way you use your body and you strengthen your muscles by doing physical activity or sports in order to keep that muscle strong and healthy. Same goes for your art practice. If you don't use it, if you don't make art very often, it all it's harder to get back into it. So I would say practice a lot, draw every day, even if it's just for a few minutes to keep that art making muscle really strong. Have a sense of confidence in yourself because art is not like math. We know that one plus one is two, but with art, it's different. There isn't one way and there isn't the right way. It's our way. We're creating the questions, we're creating the problems, and we're also finding the answers and the solutions.